All right, so there's a huge firmware update coming out today, uh, probably the biggest one that uh, Carl's ever released. Um, and a big reason for this firmware update is there's a new set of goggles that are being delivered to customers. Um, they're batch two goggles. You know if you have a batch two goggle, if it is being delivered after mid-March. So that goggle has a little bit different hardware in it, um, so it has new firmware needed to run that and uh, that's just being released a little bit early I would say uh, for everyone to try out so kind of consider this a, a beta type release uh, but some big things that have changed there's now a 1080p 30 mode that you can enable and that's compatible with the uh, v2 cameras micro v2 nano v2 nano light but just be aware you're gonna have vignetting in the corners um, unless you install a large lens like the Cadex Polar lens or the uh, Micro Eagle lens, also known as like an RC5L. There's now a zero milliwatt boot option in the VTX menu. This lets the VTX boot up completely uh, powered off, not transmitting pow uh, video. Uh, we need that for team racing so we can plug a quad in but have it not transmit video until we want it to. Um, some keypad issues with that plug-in keypad um, and then unstable brightness on the micro v1 camera uh, the vrx systems that's the shark bite vrx4 scout hd and the uh, emacs transporter uh, have been updated to support showing the nano 90 camera and it says for spectator here um, because when you go from 90 FPS down to 60 FPS, there's gonna be some lag. So it is not suitable for flying from, but it is there so you can spectate people that are flying the 90 Hertz camera. And there's a faster OSD refresh rate in HD OSD mode. Um, and then there's a known issue here, might get incorrect video when the camera switches mode. So uh, something that didn't get sorted out yet, might have to reboot the VRX when it switches modes on the camera. So the goggle, the goggle got a huge update. Um, there's a new Linux image. Uh, as, the, as you know, the goggle runs Linux and uh, the OS basically, the goggle had to be updated, the base OS, not just the program on top. And now that supports the uh, V2 analog bay that has Wi-Fi in it, uh, which is not available for purchase yet, but will be shortly, I'm told. Uh, there's a new way to do emergency updates that doesn't require Phoenix card utility on Windows. Um, analog is actually changed um, to be better, but for some people I'm hearing it's worse. So if you are a diehard analog guy, you might want to hold off on this update for a little bit. If uh, there's an issue recording with the DVR, um, it's going to not show recording solid. Uh, so it's going to be, I believe, flashing at you, uh, the record symbol, if there's an issue with the recording. 1080p, HDMI in, has a little bug fix, um, shorter boot time, of course the 1080p 30 mode, um, which you need to install on the goggle in order to see it, and I can confirm I fl flew that a bunch today, and it is uh, very smooth. Uh, the or original alpha release um, had some stutter to it, and uh, this mode has been uh, improved quite a bit for this release version of the firmware. Uh, Wi-Fi network streaming. Again, you're going to need the Expansion V2 module, and I think that uses a uh, real-time streaming protocol um, to do multicast uh, video streaming to multiple devices. So I'm looking to get my hands on that and try it out. Uh, soft power switch to turn the analog bay on and off um, through software, but that's only for batch two goggles. Uh, compatibility for batch two goggles. Yeah, so he, I guess he had to change out a, a voltage analog to digital converter and this TP2825L, which is the analog decoder chip because of uh, the parts not being available. Uh, 
and then option to turn off the uh, dial pad on the top, changing channels. So uh, that's like a hidden feature. You have to like enable it through a text file. I don't know all the details, but somebody asked for it and Carl put it in there uh, for people that wanted it. Um, now, this is extremely important. You must, must, must read the manual. Um, going from V8 to V9 firmware uh, requires a special one-time upgrade progress process that's described in the Goggle manual on page 16. So it's a little bit different process. You'll have to do it just once, and then that will update the operating system Linux operating system to a newer version and change the boot system, I believe, uh, so that we can use U-boot recovery in the future, which makes recovering the goggle a lot easier. And now, if you have a batch 2 goggle, you're just going to follow a normal update process. Uh, throw the SD card in, go to the update menu in the goggle, and update goggle. All the source code for this change is available on GitHub. Um, now, a thing to note here is Carl is maintaining his own branch of the code and just dumping a bunch of new features in and working and iterating as fast as he can on that on his own. Um, and I believe he's using like SVN source control uh, instead of Git because he's not used to using Git yet. <laughs> um, so that's why you see Carl doing a bunch of work and then uh, getting merged into the open source in one lump sum. But he had to put in a bunch of work here to get all of the new hardware support working. Um, you can't ship a product where the software doesn't work with the hardware because the open source guys haven't had a chance to get their hands on the hardware yet. You know, it's a cat and mouse game. Um, so Carl did all the work, got the hardware support in, and now has pushed up his code into open source where uh, the guys are doing great work. And uh, some things he's pointing out here, open source guys brought us head tracker, um, Express LRS backpack, HDOSD. Uh, they cleaned up the code and rewrote, rewrote some parts. This firmware I believe has the real time clock support. So you can set the time and date, but you do need to install a coin cell battery. Um, I don't have the details on that, but it, you have to open up the goggle. There's a plug inside of there, and you can uh, install a coin cell real-time clock battery. And uh, the open source guys added that, which is awesome. So we got a focus, focus chart also from open source. Manual's been updated. Please read it. Please read it. Please, please read the manual. It is very helpful. Now here's a uh, really important thing. I have been bitten by this bug and I know others have too. Um, recording doesn't always work and hasn't been able to find the root cause of it, but it looks like what it might be is when the goggles turned off and it's still writing to the SD card, the SD card gets corrupted because the file system doesn't like being terminated prematurely. So the recommendation here is uh, to make sure the recording stops before you flip the power switch on the goggle. Um, and there's a few ways to do that. Uh, you can wait for the drone to lose signal when you unplug it. You can switch it into a manual mode and then just manually press the record button to stop recording. And then you could also long press the menu button on the left to go back to the menu and that will also end the recording. The other thing is when you install the SD card, into Windows. Um, Windows will often times ask you to repair the card. You should let it do that. That will make the problem happen less often. And if it continues to happen to you, um, the ultimate fix um, for now is to format the SD card in the goggle and that tends to solve it. So huge update. Um, really interesting to have all these new features come at us. The 1080p 30 mode is pretty cool. Um, OSD looks pretty crispy. The DVR looks pretty crispy. Um, good stuff. Enjoy the new features and uh, let me know if you have any questions.